Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at single phase full wave control rectifier with R load. So let's get started. This is the circuit diagram of a single phase full wave control rectifier with a resistive load. We have four thyristors T1, T2, T3, T4 connected in a form of a bridge arrangement. We call this circuit as a full wave control rectifier because both positive and negative half cycles we will be able to convert AC to DC at the output. That is why we call this as a full wave control rectifier. Now how is this achieved and how the operation of the circuit is, is what we are going to see in detail in this particular video. In order to do that, let us consider the waveforms. Let us consider a sinusoidal voltage source and we will be looking at the gate pulse at what instant we are going to apply and with respect to that we are going to look at the output voltage waveform, output current waveform and we will also be seeing the voltage across thyristor T1 and T2. Now, let us say during positive half cycle at some instant, say alpha, we will be firing a pulse. That is, at this instant, let us say alpha, what happens to the operation of the circuit? So let us consider the circuit again. So during positive half cycle of the power supply, we are applying a gate pulse. That is, the supply voltage Vs is positive and negative. And if you carefully observe, positive is connected to this point and this point is nothing but the anode of T1 and negative is connected to the cathode of T2 and as a result, T1 and T2 will be forward biased and we are applying a gate pulse to T1 and T2. So this gate pulse is only for T1 and T2. Please make a note of it. We are not triggering T3 and T4 and even if we trigger, it will not turn on because it is reversed biased. So T1 and T2 is turned on. As a result, what happens? The current starts flowing from the source through this direction, through this direction, through this direction, through this direction, through this direction to the load. So the direction of current to the output side, let us consider the polarity to be equal to V out and you have a positive voltage and positive current that is from upward to downward direction over here in this fashion and it goes to this path, it flows through this path, it flows through this path and it comes back to the source over here. So this will be the path in which the current flows and we will be having a voltage with plus and minus at the output terminals. So what is the output voltage in that case? Output voltage will be following the supply voltage. That is V out will be equal to Vs because we don't have any other power consuming components over here. This is just acting as a short circuit. Whatever we are supplying is appearing at this particular terminals through this path. So now let's look at the output voltage waveform. So output voltage waveform, if you carefully observe, it is starting at zero because T1 and T2 when we are applying a pulse only at instant alpha and all the components are open circuited and there is no flow of current or there is no voltage available at the load terminal. That is why it is starting at zero. Now when we are applying a gate pulse at alpha, T1 and T2 was turned on. As a result, what will happen? Current starts flowing through the load in this particular fashion. And as a result, what, what will be the output voltage? I had mentioned that V out will be equal to Vs. That means the output voltage will follow the supply voltage waveform. Path. So it is instantly going to the supply voltage, it is instantly going to the supply voltage and following the path of the supply voltage. So it will basically follow whatever is the supply voltage waveform in this particular case. This will happen till the supply voltage goes negative. So when the supply voltage goes negative, obviously T1 and T2 will be reversed past due to natural commutation, isn't it? Because this polarity will change as a result, T1 will no longer have positive connected to the anode and T2 will no longer have negative connected across T cathode of T2. As a result, you will have this output voltage going to zero. But now what will happen to the output current? The output current I out is nothing but V out by R. That means what I'm trying to say is in this case, the output current will exactly follow the pattern of the output voltage. The only difference is the based on the value of resistor, the magnitude of I out will change. So it might be a much smaller magnitude rather than exactly what V out is. But if R is equal to one, then I out and V out will be the same. So it depends. This shape largely depends on the resistor value. I hope this point is clear. 
So now what happens when we are applying a gate pulse again to T3 and T3, T4 at this instant? Or when we are applying gate pulse to this particular circuit, what happens during that particular scenario? Let us consider the circuit again to understand the operation. We will have the supply voltage going in the negative direction and positive direction. That is positive is connected to over here in this particular fashion to this path and negative is connected to over here. That means T3 anode is connected to positive and T4 cathode T4 cathode is connected to negative based on this. So when this happens T3 and T4 will be forward bias. T1 and T2 will remain open circuited because it is acting as reversed bias condition as a result it acts as open circuit. So now what will happen to the direction of the flow of current. So the current will be flowing through this path isn't it. The current will be flowing through this path. It will flow through this path. It will flow through this path and it will flow through this path and it will flow through this path and then it will flow through this path and it will return through this path and it will reach here in this particular fashion. So again you, if you see the supply voltage will be V out that is positive and the current is also same as we had achieved in the previous cycle. So previously also we had achieved the same direction of current and with the same polarity of voltage. Again what will be the voltage? So voltage again will be equal to V out is equal to V is the reason because there is no other components there is no power consuming components in this network isn't it it will act as a simple short circuit whatever we are supplying will appear at the load terminals I hope this point is clear so now what happens to the waveforms as I had mentioned the voltage output voltage will be zero because T1, T2, T3, T3, T4 all of them will not be conducting at this period until we have another firing pulse so when we have another firing pulse what will happen we will be having the same voltage that is it again starts following the supply voltage waveform in the positive direction in the positive direction in the sense we are getting V out is equal to Vs so we will be getting the same voltage that we had got in the previous cycle I hope this point is clear similarly the same thing happens with respect to current as I mentioned I out will be equal to V out by R depending upon the magnitude of the resistor that we are choosing the shape of the waveform will vary but it will exactly follow whatever we are getting with respect to the V out. So what is that we are going to get? We are going to get the same shape over here. Again in the next cycle the output voltage and output current follows the same pattern. That means both first cycle and this negative half cycle both the cycles we are getting voltage output voltage and we are able to control both the cycles based on the alpha value. So careful observation here is the output voltage here is because of T1, T2, the output voltage here is because of T3, T4, again the output voltage here is because of T1, T2. Very very important observation. Now what is the voltage across VT1 and VT2? I will be explaining how to draw voltage pattern across VT1 and VT2 and I would expect you to draw VT3 and VT4 on your own. It is exactly opposite to what VT1 and VT2. I hope you will be able to do that. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. So for VT1 and VT2 what happens initially is that it starts from this point and it reaches till this point that is whenever the thyristor T1 and T2 start conducting what happens it will instantly go to zero it will be starting from some some point that is in this direction and why it starts in this direction you will understand as we explain the cycle but once there is T1 and T2 conducting the voltage across the thyristor VT1 and VT2 will go to zero because it is acting a short circuit isn't it the voltage VT1 and VT2 if you measure with a voltmeter it will be equal to zero because it is acting as a short circuit under ideal condition so it will be equal to zero it will be equal to zero and now what happens during this instant T1 and T2 was turned off as a result what will happen this negative voltage that is applied from the source during negative half cycle that is this will directly appear at the T1 and T2 terminals so this will basically follow the VT1 and VT2 again in this next cycle you will have the continuation of whatever was supplied and when T1 and T2 conducts again it will follow this particular waveform so that is why you see a spike over here and that is why we are considering it to start from some point over here. Again it will go to zero and the cycle repeats. 
exactly opposite to that is what you have to draw for VT2, VT3 and VT4. The voltage across VT3 and VT4, it will be the same. It is exactly opposite to VT1 and VT2. I hope the analysis is clear. Now let, now let us take a look at the expressions for average output voltage. So these expressions are very, very important to solve numericals. So it is very important to understand how to derive them at the first place. So we have seen this in numerous cases, isn't it, for half wave control rectifier circuits. So what is the average output voltage given by V out from the fundamental definition is one by total time period. So we are going to consider one by total time period here as equal to pi because each half cycle we are able to control and that is why we are going to consider it as pi. Whereas in half wave control rectified, we considered this as two pi, isn't it? And integration of V out is basically from alpha to pi, isn't it? So that is why we will write alpha to pi and the voltage is Vm sin omega t into d omega t. Now simplifying this further, V out is equal to, let us take Vm outside, Vm by pi into integration of sin omega t is minus cos omega t from alpha to pi. V out is equal to Vm by pi into, when you are simplifying this, you will be getting 1 plus cos alpha. So this is the expression for average value of output voltage for this particular converter circuit. Now let's take a look at the RMS value of output voltage. Again, we will be considering the fundamental definition. So V out RMS is given by square root of 1 by pi into integration of alpha to pi because we are again considering from alpha to pi only. So you will be getting Vm square sin square omega t into d omega t. Isn't it? So now V out RMS is equal to square root of Vm square by pi taking Vm square outside and you have integration of alpha to pi 1 minus cos 2 omega t whole divided by 2 into d omega t. We can write sin square omega t as 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2. So further simplifying this particular expression, we have done this in numerous cases in the past. We will be getting Vm by root of 2 pi into pi minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha by 2 whole power 1 by 2 expression for RMS value of output voltage. Now let us take a look at two more points that is what is the peak inverse voltage for this particular circuit. So we know that fundamentally peak inverse voltage is the maximum negative voltage that is appearing at the thyristors, isn't it? Maximum negative voltage. So what is the maximum negative voltage that we are getting in this particular circuit? That is Vm, isn't it? Because when T1 and T2 are turned off, the maximum voltage that we are able to see is in the negative direction, that is peak inverse voltage is Vm. So we are seeing maximum because we know that the voltage is Vm sin omega t, but maximum occurs at pi is equal to uh, the maximum value of sine, so that is why we will be getting peak inverse voltage equal to Vm. Now what is the circuit turn off time? The circuit turn off time over here is nothing but the, turn, the time in which the thyristor is turned off. That is basically 2 pi minus pi over here by omega. So circuit turn off time in this case will be equal to pi by omega. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding on how to analyze a single phase full wave control rectifier with a resistive load. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Thank you.